Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I have here a book about a very great artist of our time, Louis Bourgois. So, Clothes Lullaby, The Woven Life of Louis Bourgois. Words by Amy Novensky and pictures by Isabel Arsenault. Let's get started. Clothes Lullaby. Louise was raised by a river. Her family lived in a big house on the water that wove like a whole thread through everything. The river soil nurtured a garden where Louise and her family grew geranium, peonies, asparagus and cherry trees, apples and pears, purple tamaris, pink or thorn, and sweet-smelling honeysuckle. Along its bank, her father planted poplars. Louise kept diaries of her days, and in a closed tent pitched in the garden, she and her siblings would stay till the dark surprised them, the light from the house and the sound of a bear the opera far away through the trees. Sometimes they spend the night and Louise would study the web of stars, imagine her place in the universe and weep, then fall asleep to the rhythmic rock and marble of river water. The river provided flowers and fruit, a lullaby and a livelihood. Louise's family restored tapestries, art woven from wool, and the whole loved the tanning rich waters, which cleansed and strength, strengthened and allowed it to soak up color. At the family's workshop, Louise's mother, like her mother before her, repaired fabric grown threadbare with time. She loved to work in the warm sun. Her needle rising and falling beside the lightling river perfect, delicate spider webs glinting with cold drops of water above her. And when Louise was 12 years old, she learned the trade too, drawing in the missing fragments of a tapestry. It was often the buttons the bottoms of these fabric pictures that got the most wear and were most in need of repair and so Louise became adept at drawing fit. Drawing was like a thread in a spider's web. Among tapestries neatly stuffed like books in a library, Louise's mother taught her daughter about form and color and the various style of textile. Some bore elaborate patterns, other told story. She taught her about the barb and the wet, and how to weigh the tools of their trade. Spindles, needle, scissors, spools of balls, she taught her how to dye. Purplish red was made from trashed cochineal bags. Indigo and gold or yellow from plants. Black wool came straight from the black of black sheep. And that wool smelled. That's how you knew it was real. Louis' mother was, the, was her best friend. Deliberate, patient, soothing subtle, indispensable, and as useful 
as a spider. Louis' father was not a restorer, but he appreciated fine things. He bought Louis beautiful clothes from Parisian department stores, but he was always leaving, which made Louise so mad. She threw herself into the river. He bought back clothes scarves from his travels and Louis' mother fixed them. Two halves of a cloth would find their way back together again. Brain trange to re rewave across the cut to make coal. Louis followed the river to Paris where it flowed into the sea. Little did she know that one day soon her beloved river would be gone filled in, flowing no longer with the waters the bull loved, but with cars on their way to the city. A memory. At the university she studied mathematics. She liked subjects with stability and order, like geometry and cosmography. Stars were predictable, so too the sunrise, the setting of the moon. But she was deeply disappointed to learn that math, like life, is uncertain. While she was still a student, her mother died. Louise was heartbroken. She felt abandoned and all alone, a thread broken. She abandoned math and she stopped in the stars and turned to painting, applying the lessons she'd learned so far to art. The color blue pinches my heart, she said. She drew, she painted, she wrote, she missed her mother so much, she sculptured giant spiders made of bronze, steel and marble, she named Maman. Her mother was not unlike a spider, a repairer of broken things. If you bash into the web of a spider, she doesn't get mad, she waves and she repairs it. Louise got her all the fabric of her life, all the dresses and the garments her father had bought her, all the bed linens, towel, tablecloths, and her husband's uncle shifts. And then she spent the rest of her life putting it back together again. See, she shoed and stitched and reworked and wove. She stuffed stocking to create clothes sculptures and figures, a mother and daughter. She sewed colorful spiral and circular webs. And she sewed smaller, sweeter spiders. One woven on soft colored ribbons, another of cloth delicate metal. She made clothes drawings and clothes books and blank pages, napkins from her wedding trouser. She made books about the hours of the day and the dawn, the rising sun and the stars she once loved. And because she did not want to forget the thing, she made a book about forgetting. Waving was a way to make things cool. With the remaining fabric of her life, Louise wove together a cloth lullaby. She wove the river that raised her, maternal pinks, blues in watery hues. She wove a mother sewing in the sun, a girl falling asleep beneath the stars, and everything she'd ever loved. And when she was done, all of her spiders beside her she held the river and let it drop again. This is a photo of 
degrees per bar with the spider. As you can see, 1996. This is the end of the book. Do you like it? If so, we'll meet again for another reading next time. Take care for now. Bye. Mm -hmm.